Hi, I'm John Aller. I want to talk a little bit about why we can't explain the autism epidemic as some kind of an illusion. There have been a number of theories that have been proposed. The number of diagnosed cases, however, has been following a relatively smooth growth curve since 1980 at least, when it was first described as a distinct clinical entity and continuing through 2006 that the increase in number of diagnosed cases is greater for the younger cohorts than for the older ones. Across this bottom line we have the older birth cohort from age 6 to 22 when we include the 3 to 6 year olds in the uh, line uh, just above. The growth curve is both steeper and it's, it's uh, separating itself from the uh, line defining the lower birth cohort so that there's a greater distance there than uh, we would expect if they were progressing at the same rate. Since 1943, cases have been severe from uh, Canner's first 11 patients. Uh, a minority, fewer than one-third of them, were able to lead independent lives. Well, several theories have been proposed by people who have a great deal of uh, vested interest in guarding against and denying an autism epidemic. The theory of broadened definition for example. It fails because in fact the definition of autism has changed very little from 1943 until the present. Uh, a second theory is the theory of greater public awareness, better diagnosis. Uh, people have a keener aware awareness and therefore they'll be able to make the diagnosis better and they make it more frequently because they're detecting more cases. This is a good theory, but if people really have better awareness, does that mean they're going to falsely identify something that isn't there, or they're going to just better identify what in fact is there. The question is whether or not the number is increasing. Uh, another theory that's been proposed, besides the um, uh, greater public awareness, which would in fact improve the diagnosis if it's true, and it is undoubtedly true that we have better public awareness. Doctors know more about the disorder than they did previously. What about the theory of diagnostic substitution, the idea that we formerly called this kid uh, mentally retarded and now with better understanding we identify them as having autism or being on the autism spectrum and there are several uh, subcategories that are, are uh, referred to there um, and also different degrees of severity. Well, what's the chances that uh, the number of cases, this skyrocketing uh, number from pre previously it was like one less than 1 in 30,000, now we're looking at uh, 1 in 100. This is more than a 20,000 percent increase. Uh, we talk about uh, um, the various stages of growth and the evidence for that growth in the number of diagnoses in our book. We document it from 1980 all the way up to the present. And according to the most current data, we're talking about uh, 1 in 67 live births is going to be diagnosed with autism today. So what about the theory of diagnostic substitution? Could it explain the um, upsurge? If uh, the diagnosis is better and we change from one diagnosis to another and on the basis of better awareness, better detection, better identification, we're improving both diagnoses and not, in fact, creating a public illusion of an autism epidemic. Another um, a theory that's been proposed um, is the idea that it's just absolutely all genetics. Uh, this is probably the most pre prevalent theory uh, that has been proposed by people in the medical profession. The American Dental Association subscribes that idea. Uh, many of the professional organizations that are uh, deeply involved with the pharmaceutical uh, companies are uh, subscribing to that theory. Is it correct? Genetics don't change fast enough to produce this smooth growth curve from 1980 up till the present that we have extremely well documented in the IDEA data and from many different sources from states all over the country. Our best data is from California, but that's certainly not the only reporting state. It does happen to be the most populous, however. We know from current research that genetic factors can be impacted dramatically in, indi in an individual by uh, toxins, disease agents, their interactions, and also uh, radiation to produce the sorts of symptoms that we see in autism. Returning to the question of Asperger syndrome, the research shows that Asperger syndrome cannot be distinguished from high-functioning autism by the best scales on the market. 
and by the most trained uh, physicians and psychiatrists and other diagnosticians. With those uh, points in mind, we can conclude that we have to have a richer theory than, a, than it's all about genetics, that a genetic explanation alone is going to be insufficient. Thank you.